Welcome to the Asylum. Uh, I'm Brandon from Geeks, Games, and Guns, and this is another Tech Talk, and today we're going to be talking about a HOTUS setup. It is the X SciTech X55. It is a, I would say, mid-range. It's, it, it's pretty expensive for someone who thinks, you know, oh, I can get a joystick for $30. But for a HOTUS, which stands for Hands-On Throttle and Stick, it is a combination of a joystick and a throttle system, which allows you to control the speed of your craft. It's good for all kinds of games. Uh, it, 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 it is a dual system. And for games like uh, Elite Dangerous, which just recently released, or Star Citizen, it is a phenomenal way to control your ship, but it's all also you know, for flight simulators. Microsoft Flight Sim hasn't put out a new game in years, but Flight Sims 10 is still one of the staple flight sims, and there are a few others that are out there. For simulator users that want a different button for extending your landing gear, controlling your flaps, not autopiloting, but literally getting the experience that a pilot might have in a cockpit, a HOTUS is what you're after, and you don't want to go cheap on a HOTUS because it, it's a long-term investment. This is not, you know, an Xbox 360 controller or a PlayStation controller that you might, you know, drop and break. This is this is an investment, but if you're willing, there's you get a lot out of them. And the one I have, as I said, the X55 HOTUS, it is what I would say mid-range. There's one that is cheaper that I know of that I think is a good device, but it's not what I went with. There's also a few that are considerably more expensive, but unless you have a considerable amount of income, the additional features, <clears throat> I don't know, may be worth it. The X55, however, is a good mix of price versus features. And I'm going to be talking about the various buttons, the ver how they work, the build quality, th things like that. And then in a third video, I'm going to <clears throat> go more into the software. But for now, I'm going to turn around and show you what it looks like, describe its features, and the general feel in the hands, which is something that I feel is lacking in certain review videos. Because to me, the actual build quality is a big deal. I do not want a HOTUS that is uncomfortable for my hands to rest the on the material. I don't want one that feels like it's going to break, especially at, hot at three digit price tags. So, I'm going to give you as much detail as I can about the hardware. Uh, let's get started. All right, so here we have the HOTUS itself. It consists of two parts, as I said, H-O-T-A-S, hands-on throttle and stick, which is, uh, the joystick is obviously, most people know what a joystick is, is for the basic controls of your ship. But for throttle, for the speed, you have an actual throttle. It is based on essentially the flight control system of a uh, of a helicopter. Whereas most planes use the the U-shaped uh stick, this this is more uh for a the 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 idea is behind a helicopter. For what what you get out of it is the ability to control virtually every little bit of your ship plane whatever. It's designed for people who are more into the simulator aspect, will get everything they need. Versus, this is a great way to play um, Hawken or or Battlefield or whatever games where you mostly need a few buttons to pew pew. But if you need to deploy your landing gear, if you need to turn on lights, if you need to do an airbag, if you need to control multiple engines, that that that's where this thing really shines. And one of the big things is. For simulator users that want to fly jets, jets with multiple engines, you actually have independent engine control because, okay, so you're you're not going, you are going. Down here is labeled 0% through 100% and then additional thrust for, for afterburners. But you also have a locking switch, which is what locks it together into a single throttle. Unlock it, and you have two independent throttles. If you don't have two engines, another thing you could theoretically do is different types of thrust. For example, thrust forward, stop, or and you could leave this at 50% and have up, 
down for a space game that has a vertical thrust. W the big thing is the drivers allow you to do quite a bit, and it's up to you. The, and that's as easy as it is to lock and unlock. The, th the throttle is a big part of why you would get a HOTUS over a joystick. What, the great thing about this particular device is the build quality is great. There is a seam up here where the two pieces are, are together, and it feels at first, when you first set your hand down on it, like it's going to annoy you. It's going to scratch your palm. In my personal experience, that has not happened. Um, other than that, the build quality is amazing. The The materials are good, the buttons click well, The these are rotaries, these are switches. This adjusts the tension, so you can have this uh, be, have a lot more tension when you go forward or back, etc, etc. Um, the build quality, I really don't have any complaints with, with the exception of two key points. Me, personally... And this is a personal preference thing. With this, this dial here determines the tension, the forward and back tension. I would like to be able to go to a lighter setting. It's not crucial, but I, I, I wish it had a lighter setting. As far as the heavier setting, there is no setting where you're going to wish it was heavier. It, it, the, the dial spins incredible amounts and, and, and tightens them up. And if you really, really need um, it to move a bit smoother, even on the lightest setting, you can, although I will point out this will void your warranty, you can take it apart and grease up the, um, the mechanics, but... If you're willing to void your warranty, make sure you do your homework and get proper grease. Um, I believe model airplane grease, but don't quote me on that, is the kind of uh, is kind of, is what you need. Um, but you do not want to put the wrong kind of lubricant in there. You could damage crucial electronic components. The other major complaint is not that I dislike the feature. It is that I was confused based on the documentation. I thought these switches were more like what you would expect to find in a real environment. They are not two-way toggles. They're essentially two buttons in one. So, function, function. Now, you could, if you wanted, have landing gear out, landing gear in. Conversely, though, the advantage of having these switches is you could have landing gear toggle, landing gear toggle, light toggle, light toggle. And on top of that, there is an incredible amount of programmable buttons. You have the four of these up here, the three of these down here, not even counting what's on here, as well as every feature on the entire unit, you have three pages, and one, two, and three. And it's a simple, quick switch with an easy light to read. And the lights, uh, they are not bright. They are easy to see in the dark, they will never hurt your eyes, and the build quality on everything except for the mouse nipple, as it's actually called in the official documentation, is is quite good. The, the problem with the mouse nipple is not the actual build quality, but it most people end up programming it as another one of these because it is it is very easy to get function function, but to get an to do anything but mapping a mouse to it, like if you wanted a four-way switch, it, it it's really not good, easy to differentiate up and forward and down and back. So th that's something to consider, although I consider it to be unimportant. Um, as far as the joystick build quality over here, it it is I don't have a complaint about it. I just I I can kind of gloss over this in that everything about it is amazing. I I I. The, the, there are only four um, uh, sensitivity settings. I'll get that into that in a minute. But they are very, very good. As far as everything you have access to, you've got these three and these four of these two-way toggle switches. These are rotaries with a limit. So that's at 100%. That is at 0%. They don't spin freely. These are the same. These have a limit. You spin back, forth. They're also buttons. So click, click. These are, uh, I believe, eight-way uh, hats, so you've got two of them under your thumb. Even if you never use the mouse nipple, you've got two 
hats under your thumb, as well as a button. And this is a slider. It toggles between two settings. And then under your pinky here, you have a, a essentially the equivalent of a mouse wheel. It spins freely. And then on the back side, which of the of the unit, you also have two buttons and a up and down, which when you're holding it, you can up, down, and click and click. And the software is pretty good in configuring them to do whatever you like. So when you're holding it, you're holding it like this, and you have your pinky on a free spinning uh, wheel, two buttons for your pointer and middle finger, and then your your index finger or your pinky can rest on that two-way slider as well as everything your thumb has access to down here and then when you don't crucially need those controls you have free control to i'm going to use elite dangerous a game i have interest in and as an example uh deploy landing gear deploy loot scoop you can uh deploy hard points you can pr pr and almost anything that can be programmed as a keyboard command similar to popular drivers for keyboards and mice for late Logitech and Razer, for example, you can program various different macros. And there is support for downloading profiles. If you can go find a website where someone says, here's my Elite Dangerous profile, you can simply download it. They SciTech has promised uh, quite a few profiles for various simulators and games. As of now, there aren't, there's only one or two, but that just means you have to do it yourself, which is, is fairly standard. Um, on the joystick, you have uh, three different hats, a thumb button. Uh, here you have another thumb button. On the front side, you have your standard trigger, your pinky button, and a pinky trigger. It is a little awkward. You would not want to make this a secondary fire button, but for example, in Elite, Dan Elite Dangerous, you have to deploy your hard points, which is what the function is called to make your weapons appear on your ship. So deploy hard points, primary fire, secondary fire is quite comfortable and convenient. On the other side of the joystick, you have another button for your thumb. So, for example, this could be next enemy. You could have next enemy, previous enemy, uh, your big doom weapon. You could have this look around your cockpit. You could have weapon one, weapon two, weapon three, weapon four, and more power to shields, more power to weapons, more power to engines, reset all engine power. Those are some examples of things that people actually use this particular unit in Elite Dangerous for. I am not as big of a flight sim player. I enjoy them, but I have not got too into depth of what button is good for what, but it, it's the same idea. You can program anything to do anything you want and in, a, in another video I will go more in depth of how the drivers actually work. One of the big things that I, I thoroughly enjoy about the, about the unit is the adjustability. As I said, the I personally think the setting leaves a bit to be desired, but it is easy to use past the first time. The first time after a minute, it sticks a little bit, and then boom, it is. I can you know do it with my pinky finger back and forth. It is. If you have weak hands, you will be able to use this unit. It just won't be as comfortable as it theoretically could be. One of the big things that is not common in other units from my experience though is that the sensitivity on the joystick is also adjustable if you want and the sensitivity is important because how far you push it forward it determines you know, how how fast you're going to move etc and if it's very stiff and it takes a second to push forward you're going to lag behind in your response times for this reason you can spin this dial Remove the joystick entirely. The con those are the metal contacts which uh, transmit your button signals. Remove the ring. And then, I'm not going to actually remove this bit because the spring will kind of shoot off. But this spring is interchangeable. Uh, the, between this disc and this disc is how it determines your sensitivity. So the heavier spring means it takes more force to move it around. And it comes with four springs, which are conveniently color-coded. As you can see right there, this is the red spring. There's a red, green, blue, and 
yellow, I believe, which are different tensions, which you can switch pretty easily. As you saw, it's just a, a few little twitches, and you get the ring back on, set the joystick down, and you spin the connector. And boom, you're, oh, well, I'm being a noob, but, and then you're good to go. It is fairly easy to do, um, and also for packing it up, boom, that is a lot easier. If, you, if you're going to a LAN party where you're going to play Elite Dangerous, Micro, Microsoft Flight Sim, Star Citizen, etc., it is fairly easy to pack up because of the, the ability to disassemble it. There's there's nothing there's no disassembly available here, but the throttle the throttle doesn't stick up anywhere near as far as the joystick does, and it and it makes it fairly easy to pack into a bag. It is not that physically large when it's disassembled. The one of the other key features that is very, very important that you may not think about is these are holes for a screw. You if you're willing to <clears throat> do it to your desk, you can drill a hole, thread a screw down, screw it into place. And if this thing does not move at all when you use it, you're going to be able to be a bit more rough with it. Now, this is a $200 unit, so limit how rough you are with it, but the ability to move the th move the throttle without that happening is very nice and a lot of other systems that I've seen require you to get a clamp and clamp it to your desk. Now that is honestly in some ways a better system because you're not going to run into well I don't want to put holes in my desk but if you're going to set up a de if you are very dedicated to simula flight simulators or space simulators or if you're going to set up a dedicated desk for example an oculus rift with one of these and you don't want it to move because you're blind you can literally with all you need is to put a hole for the screw, drop the screw in, and tighten it down. So, <clears throat> whether you use it or not, it is it is a quite nice feature. And the and again, as I said, the hardware I I have used it quite a bit since I got it, and I have all, I've listed all the complaints I have. The undersides of both are fairly uninter uninteresting. As is standard, you have voltage information, made-in information, a few things like that, <clears throat> and the screw holes for disassembly. Again, remember, if you want to disassemble a, a unit like this, you are going to void your warranty, and you do not need to disassemble to grease for additional... Um, to, to, to lubricate it, because you can get a Q-tip lubricate the ball right there and that's that's actually what needs to be lubricated so you don't have to disassemble anything on this to to change the lubrication the the throttle i have not uh done research on figuring out if it if that is true as well but worst case scenario if you absolutely needed some lubrication you could and again a similar thing it is you know just some basic information and some screw holes the one thing i will say you need to be careful with with a unit like this is that it is two separate devices this is a usb device and this is a usb device they have separate cables they plug in separately you need two two usb ports or a usb hub but they work on a usb hub but the big thing the bigger thing is that Games like Battlefield 4 or Star Conflict on Steam, which is a free-to-play space game, they only accept one input device at a time. There are software tricks around that. What you have to do is essentially download a bit of software that configures them both into a bit of software. The bit of software transmits the information to your computer as if it's one joystick. It is possible, but it is a, an additional bit of setup that you will have to Google. Beyond that, if you are willing to spend $200, and yes, that is a big number, this is the way to go. And the reason I would say get this is the next SciTech unit down is a neat looking unit. But at $100, you're already spending a three-digit price tag, and there are some severe hardware flaws I've read about, which... For it looks very interesting, but on the joystick there is a flip-up panel for you know like your nuke button. Oh, you can't accidentally hit it. 
that is cool for cool factor, but it offers no actual gaming functionality. And from what I've heard, the spring or whatever mechanism resistance mechanism which keeps the, the it lifted when you lift it up to hit the button goes bad over time, and most people literally will just snap it off. And the other thing is it has far less buttons in its place. It has a large LCD screen. In its place it has a large LCD screen down in this area, which sounds interesting enough, but it is not like a Logitech G-Series keyboard LCD screen in which there are various applets that you can do all kinds of things with. For the most part, it tells you things like what time it is in multiple time zones, and I think it can stream certain information from Flight Sims. I don't... I do not know how useful it is or isn't from personal experience because I don't own the unit, but from what I read online, it did not seem like it was worth sacrificing a considerable amount of buttons, a considerable amount of build quality, the dual throttle, which you don't have to use, but you have the option to use if you buy this unit, for the next one down. And the, in my opinion, the only other HOTUS I really wanted was the... I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but it is a $600 unit. It is all metal, it is sturdy, it is a 1-1 replica of the Warthog um, HOTUS from the real Warthog helicopter, and that has a, an amazing amount of cool factor. But a lot of people can swing $200 for a fancy device. $600 between the two, because they're sold separately, the two pieces is a lot harder to run. So for th for those reasons, I highly suggest this be the HOTUS you purchase, unless you absolutely cannot swing $200. In which case, I would suggest the um, one of the other SciTech lower ones. In my personal experience, you get your you get your money's worth from SciTech. I've owned many SciTech random joysticks. I've bought a SciTech joystick from the Goodwill used and been able to use it for three or four years until I broke it being a dumbass. So I have no worries in the long term about the build quality of this device. Being a low income individual and spending this much money on this kind of a device because I'm interested in flight sims because of the build quality, it is worth it. <clears throat> and the the software it may not be the most intuitive set of drivers I've ever used, but you can do what you need to do. And on top of on top of being able to use the drivers to program this as A, this is B, this is Alt three, this is tab f whatever the crap you want and then do that and have this be something completely different this being something different you can also use it as more of a generic joystick within the game you can have the game just recognize this as joy one instead of mouse left for your for for your fire and if you have a buddy that has the this exact same unit you can say hey i'm lazy give me your profile. Or you can go to a forum and say, hey, does anyone have a profile for Battlefield? I, uh, The way I found out about the trick to using both of these as a single input device for me to play Star Conflict was actually a Battlefield 4 forum post because people like to use this to control your planes and your helicopters and then switch to mouse and keyboard for first per the first person shooter elements of the game, which the game fully supports. You need a pretty large desk for it, but if you have... You know, a six-foot table you can buy for $50 at Walmart. You will have more than enough space for both of these, a long keyboard and a mouse. And if you're running an iFinity setup, by default, you already have enough desk space to do it. So they are large, but they are worth every penny. I, ha I have zero regrets for buying them. And if it broke and I wanted another one, I'm pretty sure this is what I would buy the next time. I will get around to a driver's video soon, um, but I will say the drivers are quality and they will do what you need them to do if you can map all your commands to keyboard commands. I believe them the they do mouse commands for other than uh, the mouse nipple i believe you can use your hats as a mouse too but it does accept mouse commands um you're not going to be able to program copy but you could program control c 
so there there's very little uh, to be desired in the driver software and so i when i get around to that i will i will give an example of programming um commands and a game profile so the final verdict is holy crap i i was really really worried when i bought this because two hundred dollars is a lot of money for a glorified game controller and i am immensely pleased with it so if you've got any more questions leave them in the comments uh like subscribe i'm gonna try and do more of these tech talks uh when i have something else to talk about and until next time be passionate about what you love